Hello again, it's just me with another message from Holborn Gospel Hall and we hope that you're enjoying the messages that we post each week on Facebook. Today I want to speak a little bit about heroes and people that we look up to. Last weekend, I don't know if any of you have seen on TV, but there was a celebration of Anton Deck and 30 years of them in television. And my family think it's quite funny because I quite like Anton Deck. But like all celebrities, really, we can all remember a time when Ant was not flavour of the month and in fact he was chastised and um, didn't work for more than a year because he had an accident while he was drunk driving his car. And celebrities tend to disappoint us. No matter who we have that we look up to, they tend to disappoint. And even our own family, if we look up to them, sometimes we realise that they're not who they were. We've also seen in the last couple of weeks the result of Johnny Depp's um, libel case against News of the World newspapers. And when you followed it, and if you did follow it, you'll have realised just what a traumatic and chaotic lifestyle that they lived. And you think there, when you see him in a film, you think that he's funny and he's a really good actor and everything. And then you see his private life and you think what a disappointment he is. And this week we've also seen the death of Sir Sean Connery. And I can remember many years ago when he was pilloried for comments that he'd made about how women should be treated. And another great actor that people would look up to would be Mel Gibson. And many years ago he got drunk and made anti-Semitic comments and disappointed everyone there. And I think it's easier to find people who do disappoint us than any celebrities or heroes or footballers or sports people that don't disappoint us. And again, we really don't know people, but when we do get to know them well, then it can be a disappointment sometimes. Normally in September, we would have had a Bible exhibition in the church and we would have had children from primary six and primary seven from the schools coming into the Bible exhibition we have at the church and I would act as one of the guides there and quite often I was given the orange room which is called the book room and in the book room it speaks about the book, the Bible and it has many different aspects to it and I won't go into too many of them because I might use some of those aspects in some of my future messages but at one point we take the children round and we show them that the Bible is described as different things. And in Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 29, it says, Is not my word like a fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? And at this point, I would normally have a Bible in my hand and I would go over to the table and I would say, well, the Bible says it's a hammer. So if I took a nail and I took this Bible and I tried to bash this nail into this counter here, what would happen? And what would happen is that the nail would go through the Bible and it would rip it to pieces. So it doesn't mean literally the Bible is a hammer, but what it says is, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. When we read it, it breaks us down. It makes us realise what we truly are. It's also at an, uh, it also refers itself to other things. And I would say to the children, if you came home from school and you said, Mom, Mom, I'm starving, and she came over and gave you the Bible, what would you do? You'd be disappointed because you're hungry. Now, you could tear the pages out of it and eat them, but there's not much sustenance, not much nourishment in eating the pages of the Bible. But what it says in Matthew chapter 4, verse 4 is, but he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So the Bible, being God's word, is food for us. But it's not food for our physical body. It's food for us spiritually. And we should read it and learn from it. But the one that I really want to speak about is that the Bible describes itself as a mirror. I hold the Bible up to the children and I open it and say, what can you see in there? And they say, we see lots of words. And I said, well, but it says in the Bible that it's a mirror. And in James chapter 1, verses 22 to 25, it says, But be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if, it, if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, 
he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror, for he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work, this one will be blessed in what he does. The Bible is a mirror. And the children all look a little bit confused this. And I say, well, if you read the Bible, it will tell you exactly what you're like. And they all look at you and I say, well, can you imagine if your best friend who's next to you knew all the things that you had done or knew all the things that you had thought or knew all the things that you have said? Or if your mum or your dad knew all the things that you have done? Nobody knows us as well as God. We don't tell our friends, our partners, our parents, all the things that we think and all the things that we say and all the things that we have done. I was reading in the paper that up to 60% of people in a relationship keep secrets from their partners. And many of them will keep those secrets till they go to the grave. Nobody knows us. Nobody knows us as well as God. Nobody knows all the things that we have done. I'm sure, like the celebrities, if we opened up our lives to public scrutiny, we would not just be embarrassed. We would be disappointed in ourselves and people would be disappointed in us. People who look up to us, our children, our parents, those that we know at work, those that think that we are very good, would take one look at our life and say, wow, I didn't realise they were like that. And when we look at celebrities and we feel disappointed in them, or if we look at our heroes or our parents and we're disappointed because they do things wrong, then we need to realise that we are exactly like them. Yes, we might not have the hedonistic lifestyle that Johnny Depp has, but there are many things that we have done in our lives and still do in our lives for which we are ashamed, for which we would be embarrassed if they were on the front page of the newspapers. And yet, what's my message today? Well, my message is that God knows exactly what we're like. And the Bible, if we read it, will tell us exactly what we're like. And despite all of this, God still loves us. It says in Romans chapter 5, verses 6 to 8, for when we were still without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. We are a disappointment. We are a disappointment to ourselves. We have done things that we're ashamed of. If we're honest with ourselves, we are not good. And the Bible says there is none good, no, not one. All have short, fallen short of the glory of God. We have all sinned. We have all done things wrong. And yet God still sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die for us. He still wants us to come to him and put our trust in his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, and come back to us. Despite everything, despite the fact that we can look at our lives and we can think of all the things that we have done that we wouldn't want people to know about. All the things we have said that we wouldn't want people to know about. All the things that we have thought that we want people to know about. God knows all of those. And yet he still loves us and loved us enough to send his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die for us. We hope that is clear. We hope that message is helpful for you. And if you have any questions, please feel free to message us. Thank you.